Hello and welcome to Black Ink. Today, I offer you a new Black Ink tutorial, accessible to all, in the form of speed painting. I will show you tips and tools I use when I draw. I hope this will help you in your future creations. Let's go. Before I start drawing, this is my workspace. Here I put the layer editor. The secondary viewport is in the tab next to it. Then below, I put the layer operator properties panel. Great. I start with the brush charcoal dual texture, because I like its appearance for sketching. I can also find it by opening the brush manager with the shortcut shift M. When I draw, the size of my brush fluctuates according to my zoom. This is thanks to the view constant brush size option. This option is really very handy. I use it all the time. It allows you to place the masses in the drawing very quickly. It creates very nice material effects. When the brush has one, of course. This option can be found here, and can be activated with the shortcut Y. Alright. The orientation of my leaf doesn't suit me. I'll fix that. W, to launch the selection tool. I see that my lasso is active, but that's good, it is the one I want to use. I enclose my leaf by drawing around it, then Ctrl T to launch the transformation tool. I turn it. And hold down the Ctrl key to deform my rectangle with the handle. I validate by pressing Enter. I have the figure of my toucan, I'm going to draw over it now. So I create a layer. To select a color for my drawing, I hold down the Alt key, and I click on the color I want. Alternatively I can open up the color palette. I click directly on the color to be able to choose in a floating color palette. Or I deploy it, like I did here, so I'll have it handy. Another essential tip. It is the current brush that temporarily changes into an eraser. I hold down the E key, and draw. I love this shortcut. Because it allows to have a consistent rendering between the eraser and the brush. I create a new layer to finalize my sketch. When I make a sketch like this, I am less afraid to erase, or correct my drawing. Whereas, if I started with a precise drawing from the beginning, I wouldn't dare to modify it too much. Here, I use the eye of my toucan to indicate the light direction. Even though I do this mostly out of habit. Now, I lightly tint my gray, to obtain a colored undercoat. I'll see if I use it afterwards. I use my shortcut Y again, to get back to the real size of my brush. While I'm speeding up my drawing, I summarize the main shortcuts I've just used. Hold down the Alt key, to choose a color in the drawing. Hold D, to erase with the current brush. Press Y, to toggle the actual size of the brush according to the view and vice versa. Good. As I find the white background a bit harsh, I'm going to change its color. I select my background layer, and go to the fill tool. I choose on a slightly desaturated green color, and I click on this icon, to fill all my background. Now a bit of tidying up, so I can use my sketch as a model. To move around in the layer editor, I hold down the space key and move the cursor. Alright. To create a new operator I right click. I choose layer stack. I rename it, rough. I select the following layers by holding down the shift key and I drag and drop them into my rough layer stack. Then, I connect this stack to the main layer stack, above the background layer. I create a new layer stack. I connect it to my main layer stack and rename it. Drawing. This is where I will work a little more on my drawing. As my layer stack is selected but folded, if I create layers through the toolbar, the layers are inside but I don't see them. That's why I deploy my operator and I delete a layer by selecting it and pressing delete. Now I change the opacity of rough. I go back to my layer stack drawing, I select my layer, and I start drawing again. Since I'm not really comfortable drawing curves, I change the orientation of my view, by holding down R, and moving the cursor. Now, I change my brush. It's a custom brush but very similar to the hair trail. I like this brush because it looks like brush hairs. To have another point of view of my drawing, I open the secondary viewport, with the shortcut shift U. Good. First the eyes. Once again it's a bit of a habit. Then, the beak. 
To change the opacity of my brush I hold down the D key and move the cursor. With the color and transparency I can attenuate the color blending. Again, I make my color more opaque. To paint a large area with the same brush, I use the secondary viewport, with the view constant brush size active. Oops! My brush size is a little overkill there. To resize my brush, I hold down the S key and move the cursor. But honestly, I much prefer the view constant brush size option. Thus, I don't touch my brush parameters that I'm used to. By holding down the Q key I zoom in my view, and paint with the level of precision I want. Then there, thanks to the layer preview, I realize that I paint over my lines. To correct this, I create a new layer, and move it under. It's okay, I keep my lines when I paint inside. Good. Now I create a new layer above my lines. This also allows to keep the drawing steps. I go back to my secondary viewport to continue my drawing. I move by holding down the space bar. Then I zoom out by holding down the Q key, to change my brush size according to the zoom. So, I easily give a fluffy aspect to my toucan. I work on the toucan's chest. I slightly tint my flat color surface, to bring nuances to the matter. Now the tail. Always using my secondary viewport. Then the beak. I create a new layer to work on my values. I add some light on the beak. I use a very flashy yellow around the eye, so that the light diffuses differently than on the beak, and so I indicate a change of matter. I hold the R key to orient my view. I use the shortcut Ctrl 0 to adjust the zoom to the view. And I hold D, and move the cursor to set my brush opacity. I'm not a lighting pro, and maybe it's a mistake, but I like to work on my values in color. So feel free to share your tips with me. Now, the dark plumage. I create variations of anthracite blue and gray, to bring light into this black mass. To add detail I reselect the brush charcoal. Then I add shading, to make it look like feathers are ruffled. Then, I increase again the fluffy aspect on the chest, with small dots of white and very light gray. Once again, I create a new layer to preserve my steps and detail the toucan's chest. As always, I'm using my secondary viewport. I erase by holding down E. I pick my colors with Alt. I toggle the size of my brush with Y, and there you go. Okay, now I'm going to change the silhouette of my bird. I create a new layer, to do my research without breaking everything. I remove and I adjust some parts. I shorten the tail, to make the toucan cuter by looking like a little ball of feathers. To finish with this layer, I draw the branch. I add the eggplant color for the light reflection. And I put the green color of the leaves. Hmm. Now, a little bit of tidying up in my layers so I can easily find my way in my document, but also not to be completely lost if I come back to it later. I take this opportunity to restore to 100% the opacity of my layer stack rough. To display or hide my layer I press the eye icon. I could also have used the output button, to be able to see only the content of my selected operator. I take a look at my different layers. It's always nice to see the work done. But a bit of cleaning up is required. The shortcut W for the lasso. I draw around my line, and I delete with the delete key. 
I fold my rough layer stack and resize it. That way, I can see what's in it. Same for my drawing layer stack. I create a new layer stack. Final, where I'll finish my drawing. Well, I still have some cleaning to do. I select the appropriate layer. I hide my rough layer stack so it won't get in the way. I hide my background layer so I can see what I need to erase. Then I hold down the E key and erase. Perfect. Now, I'm going to use a color operator, so I can choose my background color more accurately. Right click, I select color. I move my operator over the background. I adjust the properties panel. I have my color wheel palette but I change it to a basic color palette. Now I can choose my color more easily. Good. I create a new layer. I take the felt pen. And add a few details. Once again I use the secondary viewport. I press F to flip my view, so I can check my drawing at a glance. And I take my brush charcoal for my beak. Now, I'm gonna dilute my solids. I open my brush manager by pressing Ctrl down arrow, because I've docked this panel at the bottom of my interface. I search a watercolor brush. I choose the watercolor invert load material brush. I change my solid color to auto picking. Then, my brush preview turns a flashy green. Now when I draw, with each touch, my brush takes the color of the pixel that is there. This time, I'm selecting the blurry watercolor brush to dilute my colors without any material effect. And, I also put its color in auto picking. I redo the eye with the brush watercolor pen. I'll come back to that later. Well, I polish the feathers. Then around the eye. Now the beak. I create a new layer. I draw a flashy color line on it. I apply the color dodge blending to densify the color. And I change its opacity. Okay, I add a new layer again. By holding down S, I change my brush size. And make touches of color. I finish my eye. And I create a last layer. Good, I thicken the base of my beak. And I go back over the edges of my shapes to work the light. I hold down R, to change my orientation. Control 0, to put my drawing straight again. Then Control left arrow, to hide my left interface panel. I stop here for this black ink tutorial. For your information. The real duration of this drawing was 1 hour and 20 minutes. If you wish, I can always come back on it to do a second part. Feel free to let me know your feedback. Thank you for your attention, and see you soon.